Um, how many of you have a Sony MP3 player? No. Uh, yeah, well, well, one poor gentleman in the back there. Uh, uh, you, sir, uh, with the Sony. Uh, 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 how many songs have you downloaded from the uh, Sony website? None. None. Right, that's right. Uh, uh, movies? Books? No, none of those either, huh? Okay. Well, reason I ask, because of course if you've been in 1999, and you were thinking about the future of media and new products and technology, and you wanted to find new ways to distribute music, make it easy and accessible to people, what company would have been in the best position to do that? A company that in fact went out and bought a record company, and then a movie studio, because they wanted to make sure that the next time they introduced something like the Walkman, they would be in a position to have all the content to be able to assure that they succeeded. And of course that company was Sony. The company that should have done the iPod, that should have done the iPad, that should have done iTunes, that should have done the iPhone, was Sony. It's one of the greatest failures in modern consumer business history. Uh, why didn't they? Why didn't they? They had money, they had the best reputation, they produced elegant, simple products, beautiful stuff. I'm one of those guys who was a Sony junkie. If I didn't buy a Sony product, I just didn't feel right. It was a failure of imagination, a failure to imagine how this industry could develop going forward. They had all the pieces. In fact, they had even had a strategy to be able to put it together. And yet when the time came to reinvent the media industry, it took a company from outside that industry, namely a computer company, to reinvent the media industry. And Steve Jobs has done it three times in this last decade, first with the iPod, then the iPhone, and now the iPad.